Good morning. This morning I'm going to go over question 1.2 of the COS 2614 October November 2015 exam paper. Um, as you can see this is going to be a follow on from the previous video. I've got my code here. I've actually fixed up some uh, some code so I'm gonna just in this video show you the full code from beginning to end okay this is what I've got in my profile um, I need the widgets since I want a GUI um, graphic and then these are my implementation files and this is my header file okay so this is what my header file looks like uh, you can see it has the the three functions that they've specified over here in this uh, UML diagram as well as my two private data members okay and then this is my implementation file now in the previous video um, yeah this was uh, this was using different uh, a different uh, had to remove which actually removes um, the character and not uh, uses the takes extracts the character just ignore the number three in here and pretend that this is a number five because in their in their explanation they say the NQF level of a module is represented by the fifth character of the module code okay I'm using the their normal module thing so that's why I've just used character 3 okay what this does is then it converts that string uh, that string value or the char value I should say into an integer value and that's why I call this code and for debugging purposes I had these Q message boxes until I, I could figure out which code I should be using which is the correct one Okay, on the to string, you can see here I've just created a Q string result and it will um, return this information. And then, as you can see, this is the initialization code uh, as per UNISA, what they normally teaching us. Okay, so those are the header and the implementation file of this class module. Okay. If we have a look at my main, my main's have got a bit more detail on it. Okay, they've got a Q string list which they've uh, called get module info. This isn't part of the module uh, class, so it's directly accessible. Okay, um, as you can see inside there, they've got a Q string of a uh, called user input where they get hold of uh, the information from the user by prompting them through a input dialog box um, and then the user is prompted to enter the module code as well as the module name and it's separated by a comma and as mentioned previously it then uses a queue string list uh, named mod info and it splits the user's input uh, into however many uh, inputs they use even if there were more than uh, just the two asked here you could have uh, it would split all of them in okay but it basically is creating a string list of whatever the user inputs and we've identified that it's uh, the user is going to use a comma to um, split uh, well yeah show the difference between the module code and the module name so this this will look for a comma and then split it wherever that comma appears okay then it will return uh, this um, Q string list okay because as you can see there's the data type of Q string list so here's my main argument um, I've copied this part out of the from their exam paper as you can see here int q uh, int main int arguments uh, and then the array of arguments and then they've asked for q application a okay so in the beginning part what i've done is i've created a new um, variable called the info 
and I've, it's of a, a data type Q string list and then I've asked it to call the get module info um, function that's uh, over here okay then I've created uh, two Q string variables um, they called the code and the module and what I've done is um, I've, I've extracted the information from this get info part because as you can see it's passing it to the info I've extracted the values and I've said show me what value 0 is and show me what value 1 is of the list okay and I've assigned them to these uh, variables then I've got a another integer variable type uh, called the level okay and that's what we're going to use later on to get um, this NQF level get NQF level uh, as it's shown over here in 1.3 so as you can see what I've done is I've created two message boxes I've just uh, said they information message boxes and the first one will will have a title called the code information and it will display the uh, the code of your module and then uh, I've put the um, what percentage one which helps us declare the argument that we wanting to display and so it will display the code in that place of percentage one the same will happen with another Q message box where I'll display the module information so whatever you've seen whatever is passed to these Q string values is going to basically show up in these two Q message box just so that you can show that the this user split works perfectly then over here I've created a um, new module uh, called my module um, so that's of the of using the actual module class um, called my module and I'm passing the information that I've obtained from the code and the module to this new um, this new type this new class type called my module okay then what I'm doing is I'm saying the level which was my integer variable uh, is equal to calling my module uh, dot get NQF level and I'm passing it the code okay and then over here I've got a message box also an information message box that will display all the information so this one is going to display all the information that came from here all the information that came from here as well as the information that is returned from this calling function okay so that will be displayed uh, through this Q message box and then I've got another one um, called result um, and what this one is doing is it's calling the to string function in the module class so it will return this information here that is just so that you could show the two different methods of actually calling it if a, if I was to be politically correct for question 1.2 I wouldn't show this information here and I wouldn't need to show this information over here okay um, this this is basically what they would have wanted us to show okay so what it'll do now is I'm um, also created a Q message box called information and you'll see there I've said information from two string function of module and then it will display the the results so as you can see this Q string this Q string bit of information over here is actually contained in this little result because it's returned it's returning this Q string this Q string stuff from here so I'm minimizing what's needed to be displayed um, so that's that would help uh, in this instance is having that um, yeah so let's go ahead and execute the code and you can see for yourself what uh, what is actually happening Ok, 
Okay, so there it asked me to enter the code in the module, although my and seems to be a bit too close now. Okay, uh, let me actually fix it up because I don't like it looking like this. Um, into the code and and okay. Alright, I had adjusted this a few um, before the before I started the video because I wanted it on multiple lines like that. Um, yeah, that looks alright. Okay, so let me go ahead. Oops, what have I done now? It's not happy about something. What aren't you happy about? Doesn't seem to like something I've done. In there, but anyway, I'm just gonna change this back to yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, enter the module and module name, code and name separated by a comma. So my module code I'm leaving as CRS2614 and the name I'm giving it is learning QT. Okay, the spelling is still getting terrible here. Learning QT. Okay. So there you can see the first information box. It says the code information. And then it's uh, displaying this uh, result here. The, the code of your module is, and it's passing, um, passing this variable, the code, um, to that box. Okay. Um, yeah. And if I click on OK, then it's telling me the module information, which is my second message box. And here is all the information, um, the code of your module, the, the module is learning, and the NQF level is module 2. Okay, And then this is the final message box over here, which is the result from calling the module to string. And that is showing me uh, this two, these two pieces of information. So if I went to here, you would see that module code and module name, and that's what's appearing over here. All right. So I thank you for watching this video. I hope that it's been helpful. I believe that this should actually answer questions 1.2 and 1.3 um, yeah if there's any questions please feel free to ask thank you for watching the video and good luck with the exam